This is the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show, a weekly recap of your Philadelphia Eagles. Broadcasting live from Hard Rock Cafe in Philadelphia, tonight's show is brought to you by Penn Community Bank, Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia, Independence Blue Cross, The Capitol Grill, Rob's Automotive and Collision, and BCWSA. We now go live to the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Center City, Philadelphia for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and Paul Domowich. Paul Domowich. Paul Domowich. Paul Domowich. And welcome, everybody, to the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff. Not from the Hard Rock Cafe this week. They're undergoing some kitchen renovations for a couple of weeks. We'll be back there on December 5th. So we're at home. I'm Paul Jalovitz, along with Paul Domowich. Our guest is former Eagle Gary Cobb. Let's remind you, before anything else, we had a ticket giveaway. We we're going to give away two tickets to the Packers game this Sunday night. We've moved that to the Giants game at the end of the season, which could be for a division. Who knows? But the ticket giveaway that you dropped everything, your information in the basket on the stage, no purchase necessary, submit your business card, name, phone number, and email. The tickets will be given away for the Giant game, final game of the season, Damo. How are you doing from home here? Doing great, Jolly, although I missed the food at the Hard Rock. <laughs> we all miss Andrew, the food at the Hard Rock. Andrew as does G. G, I was going to wear my NFL alumni shirt today, but then I remembered I'm not an NFL alumni. Hey, How are hey. you? Uh, I'm not happy that I missed that meal. Not happy at all. The Hard Rock. I was coming over there. To, I was coming over there to eat, man. I was going. I was. I was going to eat and then leave with something. <laughs> we wanted you to do that too, but renovations are renovations. Hey. Eagles. A lot of people think you had some to say. Go ahead. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll make it up. I'll come visit you guys. We would love you to. <laughs> love you to do that. All right. Uh, Damo G seventeen sixteen yesterday. Not a masterpiece. Eagles struggled, as teams often do, after losing their first game. They had kind of a hangover week. Jalen Hurts saved the day. Lots to talk about. No Dallas Goddard. Yes to Indama Kinsu and Linval Joseph. But Jalen Hurts was the story of this game, Damo. Yeah, I mean, he basically put them on his back uh, in the fourth quarter uh, when it looked like they were going to lose and uh, carried them to victory. I mean, eight for 11. Uh, his running, uh, just incredible. I mean, he did a great job. Uh, his leadership just show, showed through in that entire period. Gary, yesterday you, you've been a part of teams that lost the game many times. How hard is it to come back off a loss? So many teams fight to come back and seem to have that hangover week. Is there a logical reason for it, or is it just something that each team has to deal with individually? Well, you know, it, it's, it's an individual thing, uh, I think, as a team and, and the players on the team. But there's, there's something about losing. I think, you know, guys start doubting and maybe not as confident. And, and then also with the coaches, you know, uh, I, I don't think they did a great job with the coaching, especially, you know, offensively, uh, uh, you know, yesterday. Uh, they, they wound up winning. Uh, but at times, uh, you know, I think you can get to where I know they're doing the different things with the option and everything. But you got this big physical offensive line. You know, why don't you impose your will on these guys? And sometimes you could get to where you're trying to trick people too much, you know. And I hope they don't get away from that because I think there are times, and even in that game, a couple of times, you know, they tricked the Eagles. Like one of the defensive backs snuck in there up by the line and was able to make the play on on a fourth down. He made a tackle in there because – you know, they're counting how many guys are in the box and all that. You know, I just don't want them to get away from what they can do all the time, which is they got a big physical offensive line and they can push people off the ball. And I, I don't want to see them get away, get away from that too much. Plus, the more you run Jalen now, all it takes is one play. One play and he's out. Look at all the guys that run. How many of them have gotten hurt? It has so many... Yeah, I yep. mean, 86 yards yesterday. Yeah. Demo, they did get out physical by a team that should not physical them. The offensive line didn't, didn't pass block real well. Defense played terrific. We'll get back to that in a second. What do you think about G's point about trickeration and, and I think poor coaching by Shane Steichen, poor play calling by an emotional Nick Sirianni, who I think wanted to win this game with Frank Reich not there, maybe a little bit too much. What do you think about G's comment? I agree with it pretty much 100%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they just need to 
to just hammer teams. Uh, another thing I thought, you know, I thought going in without Goddard, I mean, the obvious solution to kind of yeah. compensating in the passing game for Goddard is to start using your running backs a little bit more in, in the passing game because they've got two good ones in, in Gainwell and, and Sanders. Uh, but going into that game, they'd been targeted like a total of 28 times this season. So I thought, well, you know, we're going to see a lot of that uh, yesterday. And we didn't until, you know, that key play in the fourth quarter when when Miles picked up a, a pass interference call that gained them 39 yards. But until then, uh, the running backs were not a factor in the, in the run, in the passing game. So, but yeah, I mean, that and, and they just need to, you know, I mean, like you said, they've got the best line in the league or one of the best. They just need to they just need to run the ball down people's throats. Well, let me just ask you guys a blunt question, each one of you, Gary and Paul. Do the Eagles coaches trust Miles Sanders, yes or no? I, I think they're gaining more trust in him, but I, I think that at times, you know, uh, them taking him off the field in key situations says, you know, maybe they don't trust him as much as they should. I, I think he's earning more and more of their trust, and I, I think in the past maybe they've had reasons to doubt him, but – uh, so far this year, you know, he hasn't uh, he hasn't made the big mistake and he's hanging on to the football. And, and so I think they should probably uh, trust him more because he's probably, you know, definitely their best bag. Tomo? Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, he, he's a funny guy. I mean, even when he, you know, he's having a, a terrific year running the ball and there are still times when you'll watch a play and, and, and his decision making as far as he should be cutting it up. And he always wants, you know, we're, we're, we're three, yard, three years away from, you know, his college career. He still wants yeah. to take everything outside. But, uh, I mean, he's gaining yards, so it's hard to complain. Yeah. I, I saw one time in, in, in that game that he, he took it outside. I'm going, Miles, Miles, get the yardage there, man. Get take what that they yardage. gave you, right? That's yeah. right. Get what you can get, you know. And But he, he's doing better. And I know they're staying on him about it. So he's doing better about that. But um, – you can see at times maybe they still don't trust him as much as you, you would think. All right, guys, yeah. simple question. Before we get to the defense, and Damo, you tweeted this yesterday. A lot of other people did that the Eagles aren't the same kind of team without Dallas Goddard. That's obvious. He's out for a few weeks. They're not the same without Avante Maddox. We'll get to Jordan Davis in a second. But, gee, you played in this league for a long time. It's the mark of a good team to be able to hide weaknesses, to be able to hide injuries. It's not like the Bulls lost Michael Jordan here. You got to be able to play better. You can't lose one guy, and all of a sudden your season goes to hell in a handbasket. I don't think they played well without Dallas yesterday, and I think that's on them and the coaching staff. What do you think? Well, you know, I I think you know uh, what what I've been talking about is I, I like some of the things they've done, and and they have expanded the offense, but they're 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 leaning too much on tricking people at times, you know, and they get too caught up in that, you know. Because uh, Dallas allows them to do that, you know, with the screen and, you know, yeah, well, the screen, the tight end screen is out. He's not in there and different things. But there are different things they can do to enforce. And I think when they get into where they run the ball on people, then, you know, you can go play action. If you're physical, uh, you know, not all of the option stuff, you know, they want to run all these option and everything is tricky. Look, do that sometime. But I think they're coming too dependent on it. And that's why with uh, with Dallas out, see, they do different things with him, with the motions and things they've done. And, it, you know, it's nice, but I tell you, when somebody figures something out and you just can't impose your will, then it takes some things away. And I'd like to see them get back to being physical, you know, forcing your will on people, and then you throw off of that. And, you know, you, you keep it simple. It's something you can do all the time. But they're just trying to do so much stuff with tricking people all the time. It just go. It's like I'm just tired of it. <laughs> Damo, Gary talked about Colts reading the Eagles or other teams reading the Eagles. It seemed like when Zach Stoll or Grant Calcaterra or Tyree Jackson were in there, the, the Colts read exactly what the Eagles were doing based on formation. Um, should Dallas Goddard's absence have caused that big a rift? Obviously, your, your backups aren't as good as your starter, but your offense can't fall off a cliff either. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, they didn't use much 12 and 13 personnel yesterday. I mean, they were strictly, uh, for the most part, going with one tight end, uh, and it was mostly stole. You know, I think eventually – I mean, I like Calcaterra. Uh, I think – I mean, he's a good pass catcher. Uh, I just – he, you know, he's got more chemistry right now with Gardner Minshew because they throw to each other more in practice <laughs> yeah. than he's got with 
Jalen. So, I mean, I don't yeah. expect, you know, he had that 40 yarder that he caught from Jalen uh, several weeks ago, but that's been about it. Um, you know, I mean, yesterday's game was frustrating from the standpoint of they kept shooting themselves in the foot with the penalties early on. Uh, you know, every drive, uh, promising drive, they, they would kill with a, you know, at one point, remember that one drive there, first and 35 or 40? Yeah. With a bad snap uh, from Jason. Yeah. And and then the, you know, A.J. Brown's fumble. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't think, you know, Indianapolis didn't really stop them. They stopped themselves more than uh, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't look at that game and, and feel concerned going forward that there's a defense that can, you know, hold them under 20. All right. The turnovers were a little bit of a problem as they were last week. What wasn't a problem was the run defense. Other than the first series, Jonathan Taylor, 49 yards in the first series, 35 the rest of the game. We'll talk about that when we come back. Nine points the rest of the game. Matt Ryan, is he done? He may not be done, but he's uh, starting to sear on one side, if you know what I mean. Uh, the run defense, very good because of two guys, two new guys, Jordan Davis hurt, Linval Joseph, and then Dominican Sue came in. What kind of job did they do? Well, last G and Paul, when the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff continues, remember, we're not at the Hard Rock Cafe. We're at home this week. We'll be home next week. But happy hour every Monday to Friday, 5 to 7 at the Hard Rock, a dollar off Bud Light, Sam Adams, and Blue Moon Drafts, $6 house Chardonnays and Merlots, $5, $5 Smirnoff and Cruising Rum Singles, doubles for seven. Join us here at Hard Rock for live entertainment in the cafe every Wednesday. Enjoy some great food and the happy hour specials every Wednesday from 5 to 7 at the Hard Rock. At 12th and Market Streets in Philadelphia, where we'll be in a couple weeks. We're on Zoom tonight with Paul Domwich, our co host, and our guest, Gary Cobb. And we'll be back with the Monday Night Kickoff right after this. Hard Rock Cafe in Center City at 12th and Market Streets has it all. Great food takes center stage with dine in and pickup available. Their burgers are so famous, they have their own chauffeurs. So order delivery and catering too. So if you're celebrating or just getting the band together, Hard Rock Cafe's got your back. For more info, hit up hardrockcafe.com. Very lightly, make sure you jack it up so that we can hear this. I couldn't really hear the Maddie coming in at all. Yeah, I, I want to call Hard Rock right now and order some food. Right 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Can they get the food here by Zoom, man? How come they can't Zoom food? We can Zoom conversations. Be able to Zoom food. Use Grubhub. We'll get I'm always striving to live my healthiest life. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs, currently featuring a holiday promotion. If you reserve your party now, your guests are rewarded with two gifts of your choosing. Contract required. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-637. 9700. Fall into relaxation at Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa. For an introductory price of just $69.95, enjoy the tranquility of their massage services and the rejuvenating glow their facial services provide. They even have specialty services such as a pumpkin facial or their signature hot stone massage. Restore, relax, and reset at one of Hand and Stone's 57 locations in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley. For an introductory price of just $69.95, call or book online at handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See spa for details. We now return to the Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia in downtown Center City for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and Paul Domowicz. Kickoff show live from our homes. We're on Zoom tonight. Don't forget you can watch the show live at WBCBSports.com and Facebook Live by searching WBCB Sports. Gary Cobb is our guest tonight. Gary, you played defense. The Eagles 
gas by Washington. Howie Roseman, proactive, signed Lindau Joseph, signed Ndamukong Su, two guys off the street, veterans who may have a half season in them, try to win a championship, and Ndamukong wants a second ring for a second kid. And I think both played very well, guys. Not just did they play well, but they made it easier for Fletcher Cox and the rest of the rotation, Milton Williams, because everybody had to play less snaps. I think it was uh, Harry Roseman really went and addressed the problem as well as you could past the trade deadline. Uh, I like Sue and Joseph. Gee, what did you think of them? Well, uh, they stepped in and, uh, you know, they did their jobs. You know, uh, the thing I like about the guys that they are picking up is they're professionals. You notice all of the veteran players they picked up, uh, they're guys that work well as teammates uh, and they're professional. Uh, you know, you look at Blackberry, uh, professional. You, uh, uh, Kazir White, all those guys just going in their locker room, they've done a good job of that. Because if you bring in an older guy and he's, he's not a professional, it rubs off on the other younger players. So they've done a good job of that. And those guys came in and they're, they're professionals. They did their job. And I think it's going to get better going on. And you can see that the TJ Edwards had room to maneuver, made a lot of plays because the linebackers stay clean when you got those big guys up there, because a lot of times they got to double them to block them. And yeah. that stops those linemen from coming off on the linebackers. So it helps your run defense. Damo, the tackling looked improved yesterday. TJ Edwards comes in there. We didn't see a lot of Nicole Dean. What did you think of the tackling? Yeah, I mean, it was much better. And like G said, I mean, yeah, I, the last couple of games, TJ has not played as well as he had early on. And the reason was he wasn't being protected as well by the people up front. Uh, you know, yesterday was a different story. I mean, he, he, you know, the blockers weren't getting to him and he was able to make a lot of plays uh, because of those guys up front. I was, frankly, I mean, Joseph played 26 snaps. I, I think uh, Sue played 17. I mean, I never expected that many in their first game. Uh, yeah, and they, 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 they played well. I mean, after that, you know, that first early in the first quarter, I, I started seeing, I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's looking like Washington again. They, uh, Taylor ran for like 63 yards on his first 12 carries. And then just like that, it was like shutting off a faucet. I mean, he gained 21 yards the rest of the game. They adjusted. They just him down. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was impressive. See, how hard is it to be sitting on your couch – Obviously, you're in shape from playing football to a certain extent, but you are on your couch. You get a phone call, and three days later, you're in an NFL stadium facing offensive line and ready to bite your head off. How hard is that? Well, it, it's, uh, it could be a challenge, but I, I think with these guys, though, um, you know, from what they were saying, you know, they work out. Uh, they're not asking them to run long distances, you know. They're basically in there to clog things up. You know, they're not in there really to pass rush, even though – you know, they, they split a, uh, a sack, uh, but they're, they're in there, to, you know, versus that run. And, and when I think about Sue and uh, what's the other big guy down there at Tampa 50, what, I mean, he's like a, like, like a mountain. Oh, Vita Vea. A Vita yeah, Vita Vea, Vea. That's right. yeah. <laughs> but I, I just look at their linebackers and I remember how they were in the Super Bowl and the different runs they made. They had those big guys up in front of them. They're running all over, making plays. Cause they don't even think cause nobody can come off on them. And, and that's what the Eagles had uh, yesterday after those guys got in there. Uh, they really, nobody was coming off. The linemen weren't coming off on linebackers. And when the guys are safe like that, um, you can run around, make a lot of plays and uh, everybody's happy. And, and uh, it's something that they can do really uh, just getting off the couch and do it. Cause they're just really just plugging things up. They don't have to run and read things. I'm a one guy who didn't get off the couch, but played again this year after missing most of last year. Came up with a huge sack yesterday in the fourth quarter. Brandon Graham doesn't come up with a ton of sacks these days, but the ones he does count. Obviously, in the Super Bowl yesterday, is there something to Brandon Graham being a man for the moment, a man of the big play? Yeah, both him and Reddick had, had big uh, third down sacks in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, you look at their – I mean, their sack total obviously is – much improved this year. I think they've got 32 now, which is either, I want to say the second or third most in the league. But what's, what's interesting about that number is like more than half of them have been on third or fourth down and more than half of them have been in the fourth quarter. Uh, I mean, they're timely. They're, they're getting them when they need them. And you saw that again yesterday. Gary, a couple of your other previous teams did the Eagles some favors yesterday 
the Dallas Cowboys, who you think, what, Dallas? But they destroyed Minnesota and did the Eagles a favor with the, the gap in the one seed. Now, Eagles had the tiebreaker. They're a game up. And your Detroit Lions destroyed the Giants. So the Giants-Cowboys play on Thanksgiving Day. What did you think of the, uh, the trials and tribulations of the NFC East yesterday? Well, you know, I was surprised by, you know, the Lions uh, taking the Giants down, even though the Giants deserve to lose. They have won more games this year. <laughs> that thing, you go going like, how did the Giants win that game? They, ooh, they were over in, uh, in in Europe playing somebody. And they, they fall behind. And I said, well, the Giants are going to lose that game. Then somebody said, you know, the Giants won that game. What? The Giants. But they've been stealing games in the fourth quarter. Because one thing they do is they force turnovers with their defense and they attack, you know, and, you know, they're um, Martindale, they're going after people. And, um, you know, they, they make plays uh, when they have to and, and they don't turn the ball over a lot. So they've been able to steal games without gaining a lot of yards and everything, maybe kind of getting outplayed by the other team, but they find a way to win. Now, when it comes to the Cowboys, you know, uh, they're a team that's probably going to be reckoned with. The Eagles are going to have to deal with them. Uh, I think down, uh, you know, maybe in the playoffs or somewhere, because uh, when when they're playing well, they are one of the better teams, I think, in, in this conference. Damo, yesterday the Vikings found that out first. I mean, Cowboys, I don't know if they played the game of the century for them, but they played the game of the year for sure. That's how good Dallas can be. Is is that a worry for the Eagles down the road? Obviously, Christmas Eve and again in the playoffs, they laid a whipping on, on a Minnesota team. G talked about the Giants winning games. Minnesota also won like 19 one-score games in a row. That came to a crashing game yesterday. Was it more Dallas or, or, or more Minnesota that did that? Hey, when, it, when a team comes into your house and, and, and lays a 37-point whooping on you, I mean, you know, you guys remember uh, Ray Rhodes had some uh, interesting uh, words about what, what that means. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, Minnesota's been one of those teams that you wonder – how much of it's smoke and mirrors? I mean, you know, nobody, yeah, no matter no matter what kind of numbers he puts up, you still you still question Kirk Cousins' ability and you know in, in, under pressure. I mean, they've got you know Justin Jefferson clearly is one of the best receivers in the league, and Delvin Cook is a is a terrific running back. But uh, you know, I mean, the Eagles pounded them pretty easily. The Cowboys, they you know, they just you know the NFC East has had its way with them. Uh, the rest of their you know the rest of their wins have been against mostly teams, I think maybe Baltimore. They beat Baltimore is, is the only legitimate win they've had. So, uh, you know, the Giants, you know, it, it's ironic. You know, they finally had a 100-yard receiver yesterday. You know, their, their receiving core is awful. Uh, you know, their, their best receiver is probably that rookie tight end who's on IR the right now. The best receiver is playing for Kansas City now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Wandale Robinson had the first 100-yard receiving game yesterday, and then he tore his knee up. So I mean, you know, that's gonna, you know, that's gonna kill him if they if they stay alive and make the playoffs, which is very possible. But uh, you know, and Saquon, as long as Saquon Barkley stays healthy, that's always something you got to worry about. It's gonna be something the Eagles are gonna have to worry about in in their two meetings. But I, I think, you know, yesterday kind of made you believe that. You know they can they can handle a run. Uh, you know their run defense is good enough to not get beat by it. See, to take a little bit of a left turn for a second, uh, the NFL has played in London this year. They played in Munich tonight. The 49ers and the and the uh, Cardinals play. No Jimmy or no Kyler Murray. I don't think uh, Niners ten point favorites in Mexico City. Uh, did you ever play a game outside the United States? And if you did, did you enjoy it? What, what did the did the fanfare get too much for you? What does the NFL do for these teams? And you know, uh, I didn't. No, I all uh, I never played uh, outside the uh, outside the United States. No, I never did. Um, I have uh, gone out. You know, uh, in fact, I went over to uh, Europe to teach football to uh, you know the um, the military. It's the soldiers that were based in Germany. We were over there teaching their kids how to play football and everything. And uh, and some of those kids, I think, have uh, are doing some things in college balls, so, but uh, but but that's the only only thing I've never uh, never played outside the uh, country. No, Domo, you ever cover a game outside the country? Uh, the, the Eagles London game a few years back, and it was like in and out. I mean, it was the worst trip of my life. I mean, I, you know, because you know the days the days when teams used to go in on Monday and uh, stay yeah. the whole week, long gone. You know, they go in quick, and and it, and, and that's what I did. Uh, it was just an awful trip. 
Um, my, you know, every time I tell my wife that she looks at me, you know, yeah, you went to London. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the only time, uh, I, oh, you know what? I covered a, a tre Trevor Burbick and Muhammad Ali in the Bahamas. One of Muhammad Ali's last uh, fights. I was, I was working in Texas and I was covering the Texas Rangers and they were in spring training and, uh, in Pompano Beach, Florida, and the, the fight was like right across in, in the Bahamas. They sent me there, and uh, other than that, though, that's that's my extent of foreign coverage. Well, stay in the United States after this. We have another break to take right now. When we come back, I'm going to ask you guys a question. You can think about it during the break. The NFC Eagles at nine and one, Vikings at eight and two. Obviously, the Cowboys and Giants hang around in the East, where everybody has a winning record. The Commanders hot right now behind Taylor Heineke. Carson Wentz, see you again. Wouldn't want to be, and next year we'll see. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll see about the Eagles and who the biggest threat in the NFC to the Philadelphia Eagles is. You'll get that question when we come back. This is the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff. Remember at the Hard Rock Cafe where we normally are? We're not there tonight. It's Zoom night as they have renovations under their kitchen for a couple of weeks. They have Friday Night Live, live music every Friday, 6 to 9 p.m., no cover. Best local artists on the main stage every week. Make your reservations. The Hard Rock Cafe. We're back on the 5th of December. We're back here in a couple minutes with the Monday Night Kickoff presented by Independence Blue Cross right after this. Hard Rock Cafe in Center City has it all. Great food, free live entertainment on Friday nights, and they're the epicenter for special occasions. Let them rock and roll to you with catering for your next gathering or book a private event space for your band's next meeting. Whether it's lunch, dinner, or late night, let them turn it up at Hard Rock Cafe at 12th and Market Street. For more info, visit hardrockcafe.com. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs, currently featuring a holiday promotion. If you reserve your party now, your guests are rewarded with two gifts of your choosing. Contract required. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-637. 9700. Don't hang out alone in the man cave this football season. Hang out at Cheerleaders with sexy entertainers, $4 Miller Lights, Jameson Specials, and awesome game day prices during all Sunday and Monday football games. Stop in before, during, or after the game to see your favorite entertainers and your chance to win an awesome game day prize. The most epic game day experience is at Cheerleaders Gentlemen's Club, <laughs> where champions play open daily from noon till 2 a.m. We now return to the Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia in downtown Center City for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jolovitz and Paul Domowicz. Having a great time on Zoom tonight. Remember the pandemic? That's us for the next two weeks. As the Hard Rock undergoes some renovations, Paul Domowicz is the co-host. Gary Cobb is our guest. And guys, we talked about the birds the first half hour. We've got a lot to talk about. The second half hour, have a great time on the show as always. Simple question for you now. The Eagles at 9-1 in line for the one seed in the NFC East. Seven more to play, starting with the Packers Sunday night. The biggest threat to the Eagles in the NFC at this point is blank, Damo. Right now, uh, I think it could be San Francisco. I think they're going to keep getting better. Um and, and I'm going to be interested to watch them play tonight, see how they're coming along. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Garoppolo's, but, you know, their defense is good and solid. Uh, McCaffrey's giving them, uh, you know, they've got some weapons with McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. Um, you know, so I think that could be the second best team in the NFC. Gee. Uh Yeah, you know, I mean, he he, uh, he mentioned San Francisco. I, I, I think also, you know, uh, 
Uh, Dallas is a, is, a, is a team that I think could be a good team because they got a good offensive line and, and they can run the football. Uh, and the uh, other thing they have is, of course, they got a good defense. Uh, and they got to get better uh, stopping the run. Uh, but, you know, they definitely can get after a passing game. So we'll see. Uh, I, I still think that um, we're going to see what happens the, the rest of the season uh, to see who really develops. But uh, right now the Eagles – uh, they got to get their act together. Well, they, here's, here's a sleeper for you, G. What do you think of Tampa Bay uh, kind of getting their act together and 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 making a comeback? Uh, I, you, you know, they definitely can do that. Yeah. Um, you know, just taking a look at them, you know, they play good defense. So that's one thing is they're going to be in the game because their defense is, uh, you know, when their defense is healthy and everything, they got a good defense. And it's just a matter of them uh, getting healthier on their offensive line because – if their offensive line up that gut, if they're hurting like they've been uh, through part of the year, you know, that's really uh, Tom Brady's uh, kryptonite is if you got pressure up the middle, he can't mm-hmm. really get away from that. If you're pressuring him from outside, he acts like they, those guys don't even exist. I mean, uh. he could care less about him, but it's pressure in his face. That's, that's what makes him move. And, and uh, you know, he doesn't like that, but uh, they've gotten better with that. So I, I think you're probably right. Tampa, uh, before this is over, it's probably going to have something to say about who, who who wins this whole thing. By the way, guys, last night talking about guys who can and can't handle pressure, Patrick Mahomes isn't bad at it. Um, is there anybody on this earth, I'm sure you guys both watched the game, when San Diego went ahead, or the L.A. Chargers, excuse me, went ahead of Kansas City with a minute and 20 seconds left, is there anybody on this planet who didn't think Kansas City was going to march right down, throw it to Kelsey or whoever? And win the game. I mean, I'm not, I don't remember ever watching a team take the lead with less than two minutes left that I felt more sure was going to lose a game. You guys feel the same way? Me and Kelsey are, are unstoppable right now. I mean, you know, I mean, we saw last year he needed he only needed 17 seconds to get down there and score. So, I mean, you know, a minute and change is like an eternity. Yeah, uh, he, he he's gifted, and uh, you know, those guys got a feel for each other too. That. You know, uh, if you're a tight end, I figure if they if they put me on the tight end, I'm going like, Coach, uh, you don't, you don't mind a holding call, do you? Because <laughs> that's, that's, about, some, that's about the only way you're going to stop him. <laughs> there were some plays. I mean, they showed him in you know isolated shots. I mean, every time he went out, they were you know the, whoever was watching him was all over him, and yeah. you know they just wouldn't call him. Yeah, not at all. Gary, we like to kind of probe into our guests a little bit. You're over 100 years old now, played back in the 40s. You're still in the most amazing shape. I'll tell you what, for, for a guy who's a little bit up there, you're in unbelievable shape. You look like you can play tomorrow. You say you're teaching. I know you're working with the NFL. You got your website. Um, tell everybody what you're doing now. Your college team, right to the top five, those Trojans. Yeah. I, a little uh, clips notes on what Gary Cobb's doing now. Hey, I just want to tell people, hey, I don't know if I put any money on those Trojans, but anyway, <laughs> but, but that's beside the point. You know, they got a good offense, their defense, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, right now, you know, I, I do work for the NFL and uh, one of the things that I got to give the NFL a lot of credit um, and, you know, Troy Vincent, he's the one that's kind of uh, overseeing things is, is we help players that when they retire, helping the guy get on his feet, set up a career going forward. And the NFL has partners about 15 corporations that uh, hire players that are former players of the NFL. So guys are able to, you know, uh, do things productive in the future in their, in their lives. Cause a lot of times these guys are in their twenties, boom, their career is over and we help them kind of get themselves together and stuff. And that's something that I really enjoy and um, you know, helping the guys. And also I work with other former players uh, where we make sure guys know their benefits, they know what's available f- to them, and uh, just try to help the guys after they retire. And uh, it's it's been a, a lot of fun. It's something I enjoy doing. And uh, so many players, phew, you know, uh, they, they're out of the league in their early 20s. And, uh, you know, uh, life is not over. Life is just starting for those guys. But uh, it's great what the NFL is doing. But um, – we are able to help those guys and, and they're able to have a productive lives with their families and everything. And it, it's good stuff. It is terrific stuff. And uh, you'd be lauded for it. You work with kids. It's great. G mentioned Damo uh, 
that a lot of guys are out of the NFL in the early 20s. I don't think this guy's going to be out of the NFL. But the Eagles drafted Jordan Davis in the first round this year from Georgia, who has a high ankle sprain now. People think, okay, sprained ankle, a couple weeks. Avante Maddox hurt. They missed him yesterday. Big time. Missed Dallas Goddard. When you sprain your ankle and you're a gymnast, that's one thing. When you sprain your ankle and you're 350 pounds to begin with, do Eagle fans have anything to worry about with Jordan Davis? Not about being out of the NFL, but about being out of the NFL and, and his capabilities for more than four weeks. Well, I mean, they they clearly want to make sure he's completely healthy before he comes back. So I don't think that's going to be a concern. I think they're going to take the same approach with Goddard. I mean, when you're when you're nine and one, that's that's kind of a, a something you can do. You don't have to hurry people back. Uh, so you know, I think you know, I think when Jordan Davis gets back on that field, he'll be 100 percent at that point. Guys, the run defense with Jordan Davis gave a 3.1 yards a game to Washington. You think we gave up 12 yards a game or a carry rather the way the way the game went, obviously the turnovers hurt and then they didn't get any negative plays. They weren't in the backfield at all. Then this week, Jonathan Gannon made some adjustments. I rose with some signings. Did the Eagles have a problem with the run defense at all? They got obviously Derek Henry coming up Jones, Aaron Jones on this week, Saquon <clears throat> Barkley twice. Dallas is backs. Alvin Kamara is the Eagles run defense. Anything to worry about Have they solved the problem? Where do you see the run, DG? Well, you know, I, I think they, they definitely uh, did a much better job this time around. Uh, and I think that uh, having these big guys, uh, you're able to keep people fresh, uh, I think, because you got guys that are, are, uh, are going to be in there and are going to be able to play and take up some of those reps. Uh, but I, I think it, it, uh, having the big, big defensive tackles, it is, uh, is is very big because when you get Jordan Davis back, you still got these guys around and you could get as big as you want on, on that defensive line. And when you do that and you got these guys in front of the linebackers, then the linebacker can be very aggressive and they can move freely. And the linebackers are going to make a lot of tackles because they've got athletic linebackers if you keep them free. So I, I think that uh, I, I don't think they have a big problem with with the, with the run. Uh, but they're going to have to do a good job. You know, uh, the week before last, they did a poor job when it come on third down, too. They got to do a good job playing on third down, getting off the field, and you keep everybody fresh, too, because in the Washington game, they kind of wore down the defensive line because they were they were out there so long. Don, well, that's a great point you made, and, and I'm going to make one and see what you think of it. Again, life isn't about whether you lose or not. We all lose. It's what you learn when you lose. Could Jordan Davis's injury be a blessing in disguise? that the, the reps are going to be reduced. They have Jordan when he comes back. They have Joseph. They have Sue. They have, they pay more attention to tackling. We know about TJ Edwards. Could this be a blessing in disguise down the road? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. You know, the, uh, the Washington game was, was a weird game. Uh, you know, Washington averaged only 3.1 yards per carry, which was the least of any team against the Eagles this year. But no but negative plays. What have you? Yeah, exactly. On first and second down, every first and second down, they were get, they were gaining three and four yards so that you get to third down and it's third and three, third and two. And that's when they couldn't stop them. And, that you know, I mean, uh, Washington ended up having, I think, 21 third down situations, converted yep. 12. Mm -hmm. which is why they had the ball for 40 plus minutes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you need to get off the field. You can't let a team do that. You can't let them do what, you know, what the Colts did early in the, uh, yesterday. I mean, you, you, you know, you got to stop the run and, and get them off the field. So, uh, you know, these guys with Joseph and Sue, it definitely helps. And when they get uh, Jordan Davis back, it's going to help even more. You know, and, 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 and just another point, you know, in that, in that Washington game, because of those third downs, in the first half, it was like, you know, 50 plays they had in the first half offensively, yeah, I mean, which is, yeah. which is you, you just cannot let that happen. And that's where with, with Shane Steichen, I, I look offensively. You know, if you see something offensively where they can throw, it's they just seem like they just get ridiculous about throwing. It's like, come on. <laughs> You can't be you can't be that one dimensional. See, yep. you're, you're really it play, you're going to be playing into the other teams, you know, into their plan when you're mm -hmm. going to throw the ball on every down and they're running the ball like that. Then you wind up where you wonder why your defense is out of gas. They, they've got to they got to really kind of, you know, temper themselves and not get so pass happy where 
we're just going to throw the ball every play. And I, I know they like to throw the ball, but, you know, you, you end up kind of playing yourself into a trap. So I, I think they need to watch that. They do have to watch it and some other things to worry about also. I didn't think the coaching was very good yesterday. The play calling mix, Nick maybe got too emotional. On the defensive side of the ball, we're talking about Jordan Davis. We're talking about. I, I want to talk about that when I get a chance to about the emotional stuff. All right, we'll talk about that right after the break. But I want to ask you about okay. Fletcher Cox, who played 48 snaps yesterday. Joseph and, and Sue played 43. They had seven tackles. He had two and 48. Is it time for Fletcher Cox kind of to get in gear? And can these guys showing up? help get him in gigs. He hadn't had a, a terrific year in any way, shape, or form, Donald. Well, he, play, he played better yesterday, and I think it's because Joseph and, and Sue were there. Uh, I mean, he's, at the, he's in the down, on the downside of his career, clearly. Uh, he's not in the best of shape, which shocks me because, you know, he's been a guy that when he was, when he was you know, you go back to 2018 when he was an all-pro, I mean, he trained hard. I mean, he, he was in best shape of any defensive tackle I've ever seen. I don't know, you know, after that, what happened, but he's, you know, he hasn't played at that level since. Um, this is probably his last year here, I would I would imagine. So, uh, you know, I think defensive tackle, we were talking earlier off the air, um, you know, that another Georgia defensive tackle uh, who's going to be an early first rounder, I would not be surprised to see how we go and get him and pair him with, with Jordan Davis and, and, and put the two of them in front of, uh, eventually, Nicobe Dean. All right, we'll see what G has to say. Plenty of stuff to talk about. The Packers Sunday night, Aaron Rodgers comes in. Is it something to worry about for Eagle fans? We will see. G will tell you what he thinks about the state of the Eagles. Damo is with us as our co-host, and we're with you on Zoom from our homes on the Independence Blue Cross Monday night kickoff. Stay with us for our last segment after this. Hard Rock Cafe has it all. Great food takes center stage as they tune up your visit with free live music every Friday night at 6. Sponsored by Conchahawken Brewing Company. See Philly's best rocking the main stage while you enjoy Hard Rock favorites right here in Center City. Pickup, delivery, and catering available. For more info, visit hardrockcafe.com. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in giving you the tools you need to pursue your healthiest life. From premiums as low as $0 per month to health discounts and cash rewards, it pays to have coverage with Independence. With the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free 24-7 virtual doctor visits, you can feel confident that quality care is always within reach. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs, currently featuring a holiday promotion. If you reserve your party now, your guests are rewarded with two gifts of your choosing. Contract required. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215 636 Fall into relaxation at Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa. For an introductory price of just $69.95, enjoy the tranquility of their massage services and the rejuvenating glow their facial services provide. They even have specialty services such as a pumpkin facial or their signature hot stone massage. Restore, relax, and reset at one of Hand and Stone's 57 locations in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley. For an introductory price of just $69.95, call or book online at handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See spa for details. We now return to the Hard Rock Cafe Philadelphia in downtown Center City for the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff Show. Once again, here are your hosts, Paul Jalovitz and Paul Domowicz. All right, guys, Paul Jalovitz here with Domo and G. Cobb on the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff. All of us will watch Saturday Night Live, I assume. One of the great scenes, Dana Carvey, the church lady, talked about things being not so special. Gee, one of those things that's not so special is the Eagles special teams. At some point, it's got to cost them. It hasn't yet. Uh, <laughs> Michael Clay has been under some fire. I can't remember a, a special teams. That actually, you can't remember one thing about these teams. They do nothing. The coverage teams, the return teams. <laughs> what? What? Is it going to cost them at some point? What do they have to do to clear it up? I, I hope it doesn't. I, I don't know what they could do at this time. You know, um, you know, it just just seems like they, 
that you, you do hold your breath, say, you know what? Just catch the ball. Okay, that's it. That, that's all. Just just get catch the ball and get off the field. <laughs> that's all you want the special teams to do, you know. Okay, did he get the punt off? Okay, all right. He got the punt off. Okay. You know, it's uh, you, you, you're not necessarily thinking something good. You just don't want anything bad to happen. You know? Yeah, I mean, Donald, we've seen special teams. I mean, it cost the Jets a game yesterday. That punt return to Sean, part two, although it wasn't quite at zeros. I mean, you can't sign Chris Maragos off the street like you signed Linval Joseph and Adama Kong Sue, but part of me wants to. Is is there anybody that, that can provide a spark that you just bring off the street and get these guys going? I don't know what Brian Brayman's doing now, but they can always bring him <laughs> back, I guess. <laughs> He's 81, I think. Um, you know, the, 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 what I would hate to see happen to this team is to have a terrific season like they're having, you know, get to the playoffs, maybe even be the get home field advantage and then have special teams cost them a game and, and get eliminated in the playoffs in like the division round or something. And that's, very, you know, when you watch these special teams, that's very possible. I mean, you, you know, yesterday, I think it was first, first, their first possession of the third quarter. Okay. They, they, they go three and out or whatever, and they punt. And uh, they end up with a 19 yard punt return that puts them at midfield. Uh, you just can't do that. Yeah. And they do it too often, either that, or, you know, we talked about Britain Covey. I mean, that, that, that poor SOB, I mean, you know, Somebody said to me the other day, you know, maybe they should bring back Darren Sproles. Well, well, if the loving guys are descending on Darren Sproles, he ain't going anywhere either. All right, guys. Uh, we had a situation in Indianapolis yesterday. Nick Sirianni, who was our coordinator and also worked under Frank Reich in San Diego. Obviously, Frank Reich, the, the coordinator here in 16 and 17, a lot of people credit him with a bunch of the Super Bowl under Dougie P. Got fired a couple weeks ago. Obviously, Jeff Saturday took over. Nick Sirianni really wanted to win this one. Really doesn't like the fact that Frank Wright got fired, which I understand. Did his emotion hurt him yesterday, G, his comments after the game? You know, the game? I, you know, he, he, you know, if he sits back and, and you look at the game, because I was talking to, uh, you know, some other former players, you know. Do you know how many guys we know that got fired? Everybody. Everybody, <laughs> okay? You know, hey, the guy got fired. You know, Frank Reich, is he somewhere hurting? No. The guy left with, he's, he's just doing well financially. He, he could get back in the game. He'll likely get back in the game. You know, I think he's, he's taking that too far. And plus, you know, uh, I mean, how many guys get released? How many coaches get fired? Ne nearly all of them. So I, I just think that he just has is, is got to watch that. And plus, after the game, he's doing this stuff up in the game. Look, keep composure. Keep your composure and everything because – you know, everything you, you you feel, it's best sometimes to keep some of that in, share it with the people that, you you know, you want to share it with. But I, I think he's need, he needs to watch that because how many players get their friends get, get cut and get fired? The, the guy go out there and he's crying after the game because his buddy got fired? Nobody wants to hear that. I, I You know, I just think he took it too far. Damo, did, did it affect the in-game coach? You know, we know about Steichen, but the play calling the fourth and ten, some other calls. Did emotion affect the way Nick Sirianni coached? And what kind of lesson can he take from that? I don't think so. I didn't see much of a difference in the way he coached. Uh, you know, it's funny. I mean, some of that you like to see, you know, because, because I mean, we've been through coaches like Andy. We're looking for emotion is like uh, <laughs> you know, trying to squeeze water out of a rock. Hey, hey. But, but, but hey. he's right. You know, he's got to watch that he, you know, it can backfire. And, and, and you know, like, like, like he said, I mean, it's not like uh, Frank was the, the 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 first coach to get fired or the first coach to get fired in the middle of his season. All right, guys. And I'll tell you what, if if, uh, if he slips down the road somewhere, uh, he might, you know, see his name on there. So because that's that's the way the game is. It's it's a it's tough, but uh, that's the way the game is. So many guys get fired, you know. Well, one guy who's not losing his job anytime soon is Jalen Hurts, who obviously is in the MVP conversation took the team on his back and strapped him to him for the quarterback draw yesterday after the fourth and two play. A lot of people, Damo and Gary, they talk about guys under pressure. You got to bring something to calm them down. They're hyperventilating. Jalen's just the opposite. I, he could be you know, on, on, on Hiroshima in World War II and watch the bomb come in as a Japanese citizen and say, what are we worried about? 
it's almost amazing. He's, he hasn't done this that often before. He's a young quarterback, but he just brings such a calmness, and that has to permeate through the entire team. It really is amazing. Either one of you, go ahead. You know, yeah. I, I think I think you make a good point. And, and Dom, you could go ahead and take that. <clears throat> yeah, he. They showed a sideline shot of him before uh, he went out there. I mean, he was sitting on the bench before that last that game winning drive, and he's just sitting there by himself. And I mean, you would have thought he was you know he was feeding the birds. I mean, <laughs> he was calm as anything. I mean, you didn't see anything on his face that indicated the situation his team or he were was in. And, you know, that's, that's just Jalen. I mean, that's, that's, I don't know if it's the coach's kid thing. I don't know if it's just, you know, that his unique personality, it's certainly a, an advantage for a quarterback because he's never going to get rattled. Nothing is ever going to be too big for this kid, not only because of what he's been through in college, uh, but just because that's his personality and how he handles things. It's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I wanted to take his pulse then. I, I think it was around 30 or 35. See, that's DNA. That can't be taught, can it? That's, that's well, uh, no, I, I think that th th that's probably a combination of the two because his dad has taught taught him that, I think, since he was a little guy and that he knows that, you know, keep your composure because he's taught, hey, you're the quarterback. You're the one that's got to make the call in the huddle. You got to make the call at the line of scrimmage. Keep your composure. And he talks it all the time. You when, when they, Every time he gets interviewed, you hear that coming out of him. And it's something that he believes and he practices. So uh, uh, I, I think that we've probably seen the start. It's going to happen a lot of times where you've got the Eagles coming back because you've got a cool customer in Jalen Hurts leading them back. And uh, he, he definitely he, 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 he lives it right in front of his teammates. So he's, he's really uh, sincere about it. All right, guys, we've got a couple minutes left. One thing we kind of have to talk about here, uh, another quarterback who's not necessarily cool, comma, collected, or anything that Jalen Hurts is. He's very talented, but he's got some problems. We'll see how he comes back to Sean Watson. Comes back to a 3-7 and seven Browns team December 4th. <laughs> one more week of suspension and then back. Do you think it's going to be a circus? How are the fans going to treat him? What can the Browns expect? The whole nine yards, Tom. Are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, he's certainly not going to turn that team around. I mean, the, the Browns are 3-7 and seven and going nowhere. Um uh, it's going to be a circus. To the, it, it, it's a good thing for the league that it's it's in Cleveland. I mean, because if, if he were coming back to a team that was still in the playoff hunt, uh, I mean, it would be a circus. Uh, you know, it would make it would make Michael Vick and the dog thing look uh, tame by comparison. You know, I, he's he, you know I have no he's shown no remorse. Uh, he, he's just you know I. I think Cleveland made a huge mistake in signing him, but that, you know, that's, they've got to deal with it. You know, they, they got to pay him a fully guaranteed contract for the next five years. Couldn't happen to a nicer team, a nicer owner. So, uh, you know, that's their problem. Yeah. It's um, it looks like it's going to be really a bad situation uh, that might get worse uh, because, you know, um, who knows um, where the, the whole thing is headed. Uh, it, it's something that obviously they probably look back, they see they made a, uh, a huge mistake and nobody knows where it's going. There's nobody knows, you know, uh, what, what else is going to come out. So I, 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 I really, you know, the, the players, you know, they're probably not happy about that. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, it, it'll all come to a head on the fourth. One, one more thing to get to G. I want to ask you this a little bit earlier. You played in Detroit. Buffalo had a little problem with uh, 17,000 feet of snow in Buffalo, <laughs> although 10 miles away there was none. That's called Lake yeah. Effect. I don't get it, but the Lions are hot. They won three in a row. Buffalo played there yesterday. They're playing mm -hmm. again Thursday, so you're going to stay there, right? Your owner's worth $17 trillion. You can afford a hotel, but no, they're going back to Buffalo and then coming back to Detroit. God knows if they'll be able to fly out. I assume there's not another snowstorm. Does this make any sense whatsoever? Why not just stay in Detroit? What gives? Well, uh, obviously, the guys probably said they want to go back home. I, I you know, for two uh, days. I, uh, yeah, maybe I, you know, I, I don't know, you know, uh, maybe the team wants to do it. I, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, and I, I think that probably maybe they didn't think it through, uh, but um, it was a you know a quick decision that that maybe they didn't think think, think through because it doesn't make a sense, you know, for two days, a couple of days to run back home, run back, but. 
Maybe the players decided, hey, they wanted to go back home to make sure the family's all right and everything's, you know, maybe that's that, that's probably it, you know. I think I part of it's Thanksgiving, too. Yeah, I think part of it might have been Thanksgiving. I mean, yeah. their their families won't want to see them, uh, you know. You know Play on Thanksgiving. You've been through this, G. I mean, I, yeah. I assume you had like an early Thanksgiving with your, you know, like the, either the day before that morning before you went out to play. Um, so I, I think that's that was probably a big part of it. All right, guys, we got to wrap this up. Unfortunately, we had a great time. Zoom. We'll be on Zoom next week with Hollis Thomas, Gary Cobb. To you and your family, a happy, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving and holiday season. Thanks so much for being with us. Pleasure. Donald, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Yep. You too. uh, You guys have a good thing. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Those little grandkids of yours are terrific. We'll be back next week with the Impest Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. We'll be back next Monday night. For Paul Donwich, for Gary Cobb, I'm Paul Zolovitz. For the Independence Blue Cross Monday Night Kickoff, happy holidays. See everybody, and go Eagles on Sunday night. Take care.